Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm going to give you a slightly different um, approach to, to, to what's been used by most of my colleagues earlier. Um, basically, the response that I give looks at the application of these indicators that are being talked about at the local level. And my presentation basically addresses what I see as a gender gap, as Barbara Van Koppen puts it, which um, is about ensuring gender accountability at the local level. And uh, for this, I'll draw on empirical research findings from South Africa. And I'll just um, start by making the point that in as much as gender roles and differences are a social con construct, water insecurity for many women and vulnerable men is also a social con construct. And for that reason, it is important, therefore, to look at the political economic context in South-Saharan South, South, South Africa, but particularly in Southern Africa and South Africa. Um, the glimpses I'll provide for this brief uh, session are from a small village in northern KwaZulu-Natal called Ntlagavini, if you can pronounce that. <laughs> and um, basically, this community is located um, close to a dam, Pongola Dam. Now, the dam was constructed in 1960s, and the community was displaced to make way for dam construction. And the water in the dam was meant for water supply and uh, for irrigation. Today, the dam is surrounded by tourist resorts like the one you see, as well as conservation areas. Now, while all this is happening, the people of Untlagavini have been for, for, for forgotten by and large. And then the development of the dam itself has led to changes in gender roles. I'll quickly look at the women. When they constructed the dam, we were happy. We thought that we'd get better access to water. Our fields and gardens were flooded resulting in food insecurity. Today we have no water services. We lost our gardens like this. The researcher went down um, to the river. It's a 30 minute walk down steep rocky slopes, down to the river, and another 30 minute trip up the slopes, sometimes with uh, babies on women's backs. It's an arduous trip. Now, for the elderly women who cannot make the trip, they have to pay the younger women to fetch water for them. They pay much more than ordinary households in South Africa pay for potable water. And they are paying for raw water, which they share with animals. So in the interest of time, I'll stop that. And then um, for the men, the issues revolve mainly around um, exclusion from access to the dam to catch fish as artisanal fishers. In effect, this community is being dealt a double blow, being displaced without compensation, and now being excluded from sharing the benefits of the dam by way of fishing. Now, the Men also report a lot of what has come up in this presentation. They say, here in Pongola, we are too far from the seat of government. We try to fish, but the white people, meaning conservation agencies and the tourism lodge owners, continue to harass us. They criminalize us. We don't go to the dam to play, but we go there to survive, not us as men but our households, but, and also households of women fish sellers in Pongola. 
uthola ukuthi kulomndeni kwashona mhlawumbi umama nje uye oyiphilisayo uyiphilisa ngokuthi angalo zimfishi lakhe imi adayisa lezi zimfishi aphilise lomndeni wakhe bengisho I'll also close that in the interest of time. Now, for indicators, what are the questions? In this case, um, one of the questions I was asking was, um, can partnerships with the private sector and civil society, for example, be taken as indicators of the effectiveness of social networks? And the findings are that the answers are not easy in the same case study, whereas it might be hoped that the women fish sellers might benefit from technology such as refrigeration, for example. Partnerships between the subsistence, the male subsistence artisanal fishers and civil society organizations who've built their capacity, trained them as um, skippers, have not worked because the fishers continue to be criminalized. Now, I'll skip um, the other indicators and go to the indicators around um, gender empowerment, not in agriculture per se, but in agrarian context, as um, Ruth spoke. And basically, research findings bear witness to the fact that it is important to focus on the five domains of empowerment. However, I raise the question, how do we grapple with diversity? complexity and dynamism, even at the sub-national levels. And this question is not so much about the quantitative measures as it is about the qualitative indicators of gender accountability at local levels, such as developing shared meanings and understandings of context, of concepts, and of requisite interventions. Thank you. <laughs>